you have the right to remain silent. Um, so do I. But unfortunately for you, I'm going to choose to ignore this right. And I'm going to tell you today all about the Fifth Amendment. Uh, by the end of this movie, uh, you should... Whoa, too fast here. You shouldn't be able to explain um, what the roots are of the Fifth Amendment, uh, where where the uh, roots are of our the idea that we have due process, natural justice rights, also called habeas corpus rights. Um, I also want you to be able to explain the importance of the protections that we have against self-incrimination, a.k.a. the right to remain silent. And lastly, you should be able to define and expand upon uh, the concepts of double jeopardy, uh, the grand jury, and lastly, eminent domain. As you can tell from these wide varying objectives, the Fifth Amendment is pretty big. Um, it has a lot of parts. Most of them relate to legal protections that uh, people have had um, going back to the Magna Carta, going back to the Middle Ages. Uh, Magna Carta, you might remember, is a document we talked about uh, from the colonial period last year that was very influential on the ideas of self-government, that no one should be above the law, uh, set forth the idea of a trial by jury, um, your right to not uh, self-incriminate yourself, so on, so on and so forth. Um, so most of these tie into many of the legal protections that the founders had or thought they should have as British citizens. Of course, the British trampled upon these rights, but this is that whole idea of instating things that they felt were natural rights before when they were British colonists and now as American citizens. So, what are these rights? Well, as the big shushy finger uh, behind the writing says, um, you have the right to remain silent. You do not have to incriminate yourself. Um, you have the right to not tell the police anything that you feel could lead to your prosecution, that could lead to your incarceration, going to jail. You don't have to answer any questions that you feel may uh, incriminate you. Uh, if you're on, in trial, you have the right to plead the Fifth Amendment. Um, if the police want to interview you, you don't have to answer their questions. You have the right to remain silent. Now, you don't have the right to lie. <laughs> You, if you uh, choose to not be silent and answer the questions in a dishonest way, well, then you can be prosecuted for that. That's called perjury. Um, you have the right to uh, not be subject to double jeopardy. No, not the game show. Um, the idea of jeopardy is something, a, a dangerous situation, and there's no more dangerous situation for your rights, for your liberties, them being put on trial. Um, you could lose your freedom. You could lose your money. Um, in capital cases, you could lose your life. Um, being on trial is expensive and costly, not just to your finances, but to your time, to your will, uh, to your life. Um, to that end, if you were found innocent, if you were acquitted, um, of a charge, you cannot be charged for the same crime twice. Um, that's not to say that if you were found innocent, you went out and told the world that you were guilty, that the government couldn't find different charges to bring you up on. Um, say, for example, obstruction of justice. But you just can't be charged with the same crime twice. Um, you cannot be imprisoned without due process. Uh, that means a trial. Uh, that means the possibility of bail. Now, of course, the government, if they feel that you're a flight risk or um, so on and so forth, they think that you might run away, they have the, the possibility of not holding bail. But you have the, the right to have your say, to due process, to be able to force the government, they're accusing you of breaking the law, to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. You have a right to a trial. Um and if you are accused of a major crime, a capital crime, um, say, for example, uh, murder, grand uh, larceny, so on and so forth, major crimes, uh, the indictment must come from a grand jury. That means that it, once again, gives a little bit more uh, democratization to the judicial process. 
that a grand jury, which can range in size depending on state, um, would look at the evidence uh, of whether or not uh, there was enough to indict or bring up charges against the person. That doesn't mean that the person is guilty. It just basically means that they're going to put this person on trial. They feel that there's enough evidence out there that this person should be charged with the crime and be tried for it. Um, lastly, uh, and this relates more to Magna Carta rights, but not necessarily uh, to your rights in court, uh, the government can't seize your property without due compensation. Um, the government has the right of eminent domain if they feel that your property is um, something that would be beneficial to the whole of the good. They have the right to basically force you to sell uh, their property, but they have to give you compensation for whatever that property is. Let's say if your home happened to be in the pathway where they're going to be building a new school to serve the community because the schools are overcrowded or a, a new highway because the, the roads are jammed up and they want to build it right through the pathway of where your home is, they can force you to sell, um, but they have to give you the fair compensation, the fair value for your property. So Fifth Amendment, like we said, has a lot of rights related to it. Uh, in relation to that, you've watched a Brain Pop movie on Miranda rights, and we spoke about we've been speaking about the Miranda rights in class. So, let's do an essential question. Um, as previously stated, the, pre the police, uh, thanks to uh, Miranda v. Arizona, have to give the Miranda warning, advising anyone who's being invested of a crime that first they have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to not say anything to help your prosecution, to not give them verbal evidence. You have the right to just be quiet. So my essential question for you is this. Since the school, in many ways for your life, acts as the executive branch, acts as the enforcement of the rules of law for the government, I mean, the school is a government institution, should a teacher or a principal who is investigating you for a disciplinary issue, who is trying to get information from you um, about any role that you might have had and something that was against the rules that you could be punished for, should a teacher or a principal have to give you that same warning? Should they advise you that you have the right to remain silent? And if they don't, can you be immune to any punishment that you get if you give them information that incriminates yourself? What do you think? Write your thoughts. Um, we'll discuss this in class. I look forward to hearing from you.